Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can control an OutRunner motor like this one, which is a motor made by Allied Motion Company. Pretty nice motor with very low cogging torque, with solo in sensorless fashion. So, here I'm having Solo Pico, and uh, this motor operates at 30 volt with a nominal speed around 1000 RPM. So we want to control the speed of it, and what matters is the fact that, there, as you can see, there is nothing connected to the uh, input of solo in terms of sensors, so there is no uh, HAL sensor or encoder connected. We only have connected the phase wires of the motor and the order actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you connect red to A or B or C, at least for testing initially the motor, and later on you need to standardize your process of production. So, now I'm going to connect the system, I'm going to control everything through motion terminal and uh, show you how you can achieve a closed loop sensorless control on this. Okay, so I have everything connected, I have the power, I have the USB, and what, what is very important here, to not to forget about Solo Pico and Solo Mega later on, is the connection of STO, safe torque off. Here, I have bypassed the safe torque off through a jumper, so uh, the power electronics now is active, so you can control the motor. And now I go to motion terminal, Okay, now I'm in motion terminal and I want to start the operation. So what I need to do is get connected to the controller. So the controller is detected, Pico and uh, the firmware version. So once you go there, there are some parameters that you need to take care of. The first parameter is current limit. So for this motor, something around 10 amps is enough based on the user manual. The switching frequency of the drive, 20 kilohertz, is usually very good for many, many types of motors. Based on our experience, 90% of the motors are okay with 20 kilohertz. And then the year regeneration current limit to define if you want any current to go back to the supply or not, and how much. And you don't need to put it zero all the time because this is gonna reduce the dynamic performance. So keep it as low as you can if you use the supply, but not too low. And then uh, what, another very important thing is the number of poles of the motor. This mo motor has 30 poles. So here I've set it. And the last thing is the motor type. So as this motor is not too fast, the speed of it is around 1000 RPM, we will select a normal brushless, BLC PMSM. So usually this motor type for sensorless algorithm is good when you have a motor below 2000 RPM, which is the case here. The rest of the parameters are not important here can go down, and then there is a, a motor identification panel, so you need to at least identify the motor once here. If you press the motor identification, it identifies the parameters and all these values are updated. And then the last thing before uh, running the sensorless algorithm is making sure that you are in sensorless mode, as I am here, and what is the transition speed that we prefer? So as mentioned, this motor has 1000 RPM, of nominal speed. As a rule of thumb, the transition speed usually is good when you put 20% of the nominal speed. So something around 150, 200 RPM is enough. So 20% of the nominal speed of this motor is actually 200 RPM, so I said 200 RPM. And that's it. Uh, now I wanna, for example, control this, the speed of this motor up to 500 RPM. So for that, I let the monitoring to run. I'm gonna have here the torque in blue and the uh, speed of the motor in red. So let's go, let's go to 500 RPM. So, yeah, great. So the motor goes into a, a startup phase that is the closed loop startup here, this first part of the graph, and then it goes to full closed loop speed controlling. So if I let the monitoring going on, we can see we are at 500 RPM with a very high accuracy of two RPM. And, uh, and the current inside the motor is around 0 0.9 amps. Yeah, if I apply a little bit of load by my hand, the current will grow, but the speed remains constant. So it, it keeps the speed constant at 500 RPM. Then I can go to higher speeds, maybe 800 RPM. And here we are, again I can apply a little bit of load. So. It's working very well, and uh, and even I can change the direction. 
So one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that you need to have a speed acceleration and deceleration here just to smoothen the uh, acceleration and deceleration. For this motor, I chose 10 revolution per square second. You can choose higher values. And as I have acceleration and deceleration, I can change the direction while the motor is running. So if I change to counterclockwise, you will see here. So we went from negative 800 RPM to positive 800 RPM and the motor is running. Thank you for your attention. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to our channel to see future developments on these algorithms and other things we do and stay tuned.